Well, we're loving this. this one, but most people what? probably wouldn't. A room full of hackers, all trying to hack into voting machines. You can possibly make it accept a fake card or accept any card, so you could add your own votes. These are supposed to be the latest machines. They're still used in elections, and they're running ancient software. I think that, like, if somebody wanted to, it would be pretty easy to fake an election. Less than a couple hours with access, and they're already figuring out ways to break in and play pranks. But it gets more serious. So you could leave the security key into it and still inject. I feel like I'm the only one here that hasn't found a vulnerability. <laughs> it's not what you think. They've all been invited here to demonstrate just how vulnerable the tech we rely on for our elections can be. The experiment is the brainchild of Jake Braun. He's a former security advisor for the Obama administration. You know, with everything that happened in, in 16, what we're trying to do is get this ind industry to mature from a cybersecurity perspective so you don't have folks saying what they are now, which is things like machines are unhackable or databases are air-gapped and can't be changed. It's not clear if any actual machines were infiltrated in the 2016 election, and no one has suggested any physical votes were changed. But intelligence officials agree that Russia was able to meddle with other election-related systems. This inspired Braun and the organizers of this year's DEF CON hacking conference to collect over 30 pieces of voting-related equipment, including voting machines and a mock elections office, and tell a group of hackers to try any means necessary to break into and reverse engineer them. And it didn't take long. Several were compromised within the first hour and a half. So if you're a voter in America, we're likely hacking a machine that you vote on. There's a few dozen of these machines and also electronic poll books. In some states, people check in on an electronic device as opposed to a paper book. How you cast your vote varies from district to district. Some places use this machine. Some places use that one. Some counties only vote on paper ballots. But almost all of these machines are still in use somewhere in the United States. Some of the hacks might not work if your district has updated the software on the machines, although many don't. We can go in and hack this lock within 10 seconds. You gain access to the operating system. We could actually remove this and clone this particular USB. We could go back and start looking at and reverse engineering what's on this image and determining the various ways that we can impact this particular operating system. When no people are going after you, until... you guys, no one will believe you. If they see XP, they're very happy. <laughs> hey, good lord, did he just say good lord? I like that every time it reboots to Windows crazy. XP, you hear people yeah. groaning behind us. The machines you use to cast your vote aren't the only point of entry for attackers. Other election-related systems, like campaign networks and registration databases, are also at risk. The vulnerabilities at the voting machine level are very localized, and what we're trying to simulate out here is the entire back-end network. There's a lot of mischief these guys can do without ever actually having to physically get access to a machine. If they were just to go in and mess up the voter file, you could have millions of people showing up at the wrong precinct, or showing up at the right precinct, but the name's wrong in the poll book, and then all of a sudden, now they don't know where they need to go. Intelligence officials have stated that Russia was able to influence the election without the need to penetrate actual voting machines by breaching DNC computers, accessing staffer emails and opposition research. The Department of Homeland Security also found that they targeted election-related systems in as many as 21 states. If you wanted to go in and specifically manipulate vote counts on every single machine in America, that'd be really hard to do. Right. But you don't need to do that to have an impact on, on the election in 18 either. You don't only have to flip a couple Senate seats to have an impact on U.S. Congress. If it can be done, there's a chance it's already being done. If a nation state, a criminal organization, if they would start doing this, they would have stolen databases, they would have stolen machines, they would have manuals, they would have started. Right. They have started with nothing a few hours ago. The uphill battle they have fought to get where they are is incomprehensibly more difficult than what real criminal would need to do. Do you think that nation states, real criminals, have already have an idea of some of the vulnerabilities that are being discovered today? Absolutely. It's all documented. It's in public documents. It's, it's, it's not hiding anywhere. You can go actually to Secretary of State websites and download and learn hundreds and hundreds of vulnerabilities. By the end of the weekend, all of the available machines had been hacked successfully, including an electronic poll book system that still contained the personal data of over 650,000 Tennessee voters in Shelby County, information that hadn't been properly wiped before the machines were resold. 
The county's administrator of elections told CNN Tech that they are looking into the incident and that as far as they're aware, the information exposed on the poll book is already publicly available through a request to the Board of Elections. When reached for comment, manufacturer Election Systems and Software told CNN Tech, unrestricted access to a voting unit in an uncontrolled environment is not a legitimate test. We've extended an invitation to the organizers of DEF CON, inviting them to visit our home office, meet our developers, and engage in a collaborative discussion regarding voting system security. To date, we have not received a response. Dominion Voting Systems did not respond to our request for comment. The plan is to eventually present the event's findings to Congress. What the election industry needs to do is start working together with our national security agencies to share threat information, understand when the bad guys get in, and then get them out when they do. If we don't get our act together quickly, this could be one of the biggest threats to American democracy in our history. Do you believe that right now we are in a position where the 2020 election will be hacked? Oh, without question. I mean, the 2020 election will be hacked no matter what we do, even if we're as more successful than I even think we could be in securing our elections. The question is, will we be able to identify the attacks before they can have an impact on the election through things like audits of, of vote counts? And um, can we get the bad guys out uh, before they can do something bad? Thank you.